Hi guys! I was going to continue reading some of Rosie Revere and the Raucous Riveters. And yesterday when we stopped reading, Rosie had figured out a way to create her next Paint-a-Palooza. But she just figured out that she needed to add a valve. So here's a picture. And it shows how valves work and what a valve is. So if you look at this closely, there's a tube. And imagine like if you're using a water hose and it's got the nozzle on the end and you flip the trigger, it's kind of like a little gate. This little gate closes so the paint or the water, whatever it is, cannot flow through the tube anymore. And here down here it shows that if you flip that open, the valve open, then the paint or whatever can continue to flow through there. And then you flip it closed again and it stops it. So Rosie's figured out a way so they can stop the paint in the paint of Palooza. At nine o'clock the next morning, Ada and Iggy showed up at Rosie's. They loaded the wagon and covered it with a sheet. Then they headed to the Blue River Creek Library. A dozen canvases surrounded the parking lot. Rosie found Aunt Rose, Boss, Marion, and the McAllister sisters in the corner. Rosie, they cheered, Ada and Iggy. Just then, Bernice arrived with a woman in a big floppy hat with casts on her wrists. It had to be June. Okay, said Bernice, we're here. She took off June's hat. Surprise, yelled the Riveters. What? Why? What's going on, she said. It's our to-go-go time, said Boss. June was shocked. But I have casts, she said, raising her arms. The Riveters wanted to surprise you, said Rosie. So, ta-da! And here's June. And they had hid her face, so she didn't know where she was going. And if you're looking, you can see she's got casts on both of her wrists. Ada and Iggy pulled the sheet off the wagon. June looked baffled. It's the Paint-a-Palooza 9, said Rosie proudly. It took a few tries, but I think we finally did it. June looked even more baffled, but she tried to hide it. Well, thank you, dear, she said. I always wanted one. What is it? She whispered to Aunt Rose. Boss shook her head. Oh, you goofball. The kids created an invention so you can paint with your arms instead of your hands. Tears welled up in June's eyes. I, she said softly and then stopped. A tear rolled down her cheek. Oh, you riveters, you are the best. And you three, she said to Rosie and her friends. I don't even know what. Her voice trailed off as she choked back tears. Boss cleared her throat loudly. Enough of that mushy stuff, she said with a sniffle. You know I'm allergic to crying. It makes my eyes water. June and the Riveters burst into laughter. Then suddenly, squeak! A sharp squeal blasted over the loudspeaker. Attention, said a librarian. Are you ready for art a go go? Go, go, the crowd cheered. June dried her eyes with her sleeve and smiled. Yes, I am, she said. She smiled at Rosie, Ada, and Iggy. Thanks to you, she said. The librarian announced, this year's theme for the Art A Go Go competition is home. He blew the whistle again and it was time to go, go. And here is Rosie and Ada and Iggy and they're standing beside the Paintapalooza 9, their creation. It took several tries, but this is what it looks like. Chapter 15. Rosie set up the Paintapalooza and helped June into the gloves. Are they okay? asked Rosie. They're weird, but okay, said June. I am ready to paint. June stood in front of the blank canvas. This is the exciting part, she said. I love brainstorming. Me too, said Rosie. June stepped onto the foot pump. Rosie, Ada, and Iggy watched nervously. The raucous riveters held their breath. Pump, pump, pump. Nothing happened. Pump, pump, pump. 
nothing. Pump, pump. Rosie's heart sank. Pump. Suddenly, paint snaked through the tubes and the paint of Palooza worked. The riveters cheered and clapped. June gently tapped the red button with her shoe. A glob of red paint squirted onto the red brush. She made a smooth, even stroke on the canvas. June pushed the blue button and a glob of blue paint squeezed onto the blue brush. She dabbed it onto the canvas and began to paint. The paint of Palooza was working beautifully and June was smiling, but then she wasn't. And here's the picture of June as she's first painting. She's, there's a tube down here with her foot where she's pushing the tube and she's got the gloves on her hands and the brushes and there's a giant easel right behind her. So let's see. Chapter 16. Ouch! She cried. What happened? Asked Rosie. My arm is sore, said June. She reached up again. Ow, she said. Maybe I should rest. She tried again a few minutes later. Oh dear, my arms are too weak. Rosie's heart sank. June smiled kindly at her. Rosie, she said, I want you to finish the painting. Rosie shook her head. If anyone but June painted, she would be out of the contest. Rosie, said June softly, I want you to paint, truly. Rosie looked at June's face and knew that she meant it. I'm sorry it was too heavy, said Rosie. The paint of Palooza was perfect, said June. I will use it to paint my kitchen when my arms are stronger. She laughed out loud and Rosie smiled. Rosie tightened her headscarf. She picked up the left glove and boom! An idea hit Rosie's brain like thunder. And what an idea! She took off the paint glove and handed it to Aunt Rose. Don't let anyone touch that canvas, said Rosie. I'll be back. And with that, Rosie ran down the street and she was gone. She took off running. Chapter 17. Rosie ran down Milk Lane, past Wells Drive, to Rains Street, with Gizmo zooming behind her. She stopped to catch her breath and then went to Mrs. Lou's house. Rosie climbed the porch steps, then she took another deep breath. She was nervous. She knew how to help June, but she needed Mrs. Lou's help. What if Mrs. Lou said no? Rosie wished she was back at the library with Ada, Iggy, and the Riveters. She almost turned around to leave, but then she thought about June. She had promised to do her part. Rosie had to be brave. You can do it, Rosie said to herself. Gizmo perched on Rosie's shoulder and chirped. I know, said Rosie, and she rang the doorbell. Rosie waited. No answer. She rang again. No answer. She knocked loudly. Hello, she yelled. Mrs. Lou. Silence. Rosie's heart sank. She turned away from the door. Suddenly, Gizmo flew in front of her. She flapped her wings furiously and looped the loop, blocking Rosie's way. What's wrong, asked Rosie. Chirp, chirp, chirp. Stop it, Gizmo, said Rosie. Chirp, chirp. Crackle. Rosie heard a strange noise behind her. Crackle? Hello, said a faint, scratchy voice. It came from a box in the corner of the porch. Rosie looked into the box. Hello, she said. A purple metal goose looked back at her with googly eyes. Crackle? Stay there, said a scratchy voice. It came from the metal goose. This is what Rosie saw. There was a box with a metal goose sitting on the porch. Rosie leaned closer and just then the door opened. Mrs. Lou stepped outside. She held a strange walkie talkie handset. Sorry, she said, my goosey talkie is not working. 
She pushed a button on the back of the goose. She clicked a button on her handset, and the goose's beak snapped open. Crackle? Hello? Hello? Mrs. Lou spoke into her handset, and then her voice came out of the goose's mouth. That's more like it. Then she tossed the handset into the box and smiled. Hello, Rosie, she said. Glad to see you. Rosie was shocked. Mrs. Lou was so friendly. Rosie thought about how Mrs. Lou had shut the curtains on her and how she sneaked like a shadow in the garden. Rosie looked at her neighbor and felt more nervous than ever. I, I, yes, asked Mrs. Lou. Rosie took another deep breath and remembered why she was there. I need your help, she said. Mrs. Lou smiled. I thought you'd never ask. Chapter 18. Beep, beep. The old army jeep zoomed around the corner and toward the library. A load of pompous stalks bounced around in the back of the jeep. Beep, beep. The jeep screeched to a halt a few feet from June's canvas. Would you look at that, cried Boss. It's Agnes Lou. Let's take a look at what Rosie's planning. This is the pampas stalk, or pompous stalk. It's from a plant, and it's got this end where the grass grows, but it looks kind of like a feather. It's real um, fluffy. And here's a stalk, and the stalks are hollow, like a um, straw on the inside. So she's planting something. It says it's hollow, the hollow end of the plants down here. So she's thinking she could use this and put paint inside of it and use this like the end of a paintbrush. Let's see what Rosie comes up with. So she arrived with Agnes Lou and Rosie, said Ada. She and Iggy ran to the Jeep. Rosie, they said, what's going on? Rosie flipped open the glove box and Gizmo hopped out. She chirped happily and flew to the top of the canvas. June needed lighter brushes, said Rosie. So I asked Mrs. Lou if we could use one of the pompous stalks from her garden. She cut them all down. Mrs. Lou and Rosie jumped out of the Jeep and grabbed a bunch of plumes from the back. Agnes Lou, said Aunt Rose, what have you done to your beautiful garden? It doesn't matter, said Mrs. Lou. When a riveter needs something, I do my part. June needs those more than I do. She pulled a pair of shears from the pocket of her duster and trimmed one of the stalks. They are lighter than those curtain rods, said Mrs. Lou, though I would have tried curtain rods too. It was a good design. Rosie looked confused. You design things, she asked. Mrs. Lou laughed. Well, of course I do. I'm an engineer too. And we engineers have to help each other. That's why I left the bucket of tubes and tape for you. Rosie thought those had come from Ada and, Ig and Iggy or the recyclers, B and Bo. She had so many questions, but no time to ask them. Aunt Rose and the Riveters crowded in to give Mrs. Lou hugs. They all knew her. Your poor garden, said June. What were you thinking? Mrs. Lou raised her hand. Not another word. She said it's time to paint. Mrs. Lou handed Rosie a stalk and Rosie got busy. Within moments, June was painting again. She swished the brushes this way and that. It was beautiful. Then, snap, the red stem broke. Uh-oh, said Rosie. That's why we brought extras, said Mrs. Lou. Here's the picture of all of the riveters when they saw Mrs. Lou and they all came up to greet her and give her hugs. They were all so excited. Remember, Mrs. Lou wears the black hat, so she's right in the middle. So we're going to pause there. That's the end of the chapter. And tomorrow when we read, we'll get to find out if they were successful in using those stalks to be able to finish the painting. All right, guys. I'll see you later. Bye.